Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Ruff. We are now going into Section 8. Now, Section 8 is titled Ruby's Story. Okay? Ivan, tell me another joke, please. Ruby begs after the 2 o'clock show. I think I may have run out of jokes, I admit. A story, then, Ruby says. Aunt Stella's sleeping, and there's nothing to do. I tap my chin. I'm trying hard to think. But when I gaze up at the food court skylight, I'm mesmerized by the elephant-colored clouds galloping past. Ruby taps her foot impatiently. I know. I'll tell you a story, she says. A real, live, true one. Good idea, I say. What's it about? It's about me. Ruby lowers her voice. It's about me and how I fell into a hole. A big hole. Humans dug it. Bob pricks his ears and joins me by the window. I always enjoy a good digging story, he says. It was a big hole full of water near a village, Ruby says. I don't know why humans made it. Sometimes you just need to dig for the sake of digging, Bob reflects. We were looking for food, Ruby says, my family and I, but I wandered off and I got lost and went too close to the village. Ruby looks at me, eyes wide. I was so scared when I fell into that hole. Of course you were, I say. I would have been scared too. Me too, Bob admits, and I like holes. The hole was huge. Ruby pokes her trunk between the bars and makes a circle in the air. And guess what? She doesn't wait for an answer. Their water was all the way up to my neck and I was sure I was going to die. <coughs> Excuse me. I shudder. What happened then, I ask? I'll tell you what happened, Bob says darkly. They captured her and put her in a box and shipped her off, and here she is, just like they did with Stella. He pauses to scratch an ear. Humans. Rats have bigger hearts. Roaches have kinder souls. Flies have... No, Bob, Ruby interrupts. You're wrong. These humans helped me. When they saw I was trapped, they grabbed ropes and they made loops around my neck and my tummy. The whole entire village helped, even little kids and grandmas and grandpas. And they all pulled and pulled and... Ruby stops. Her lashes are wet. And I'm, I know she must be remembering all of the terrible feelings from that day. They saved me. She finishes in, in a whisper. Bob blinks. They saved you, he repeats. When I was finally out, everyone cheered, Ruby says. And the children fed me fruit. And then all those humans led me back to my family. It took the whole day to find them. No way, Bob says, still doubtful. It's true, Ruby says. Every word. Of course it's true, I say. I've heard rescue stories like that before. It's Stella's voice. She sounds wary. Slowly, she makes her way over to Ruby. Humans can surprise you sometimes. An unpredictable species. Homo sapiens. Bob still looks unconvinced. But Ruby's here now, he points out. If humans are so swell, who did that to her? I send Bob a grumpy look. Sometimes he doesn't know when to keep quiet. Ruby swallows, and I'm afraid she's going to cry. But when she speaks, her voice is strong. Bad humans killed my family, and bad humans sent me here. But that day in the hole, it was humans who saved me. Ruby leans her head on Stella's shoulder. Those humans were good. It doesn't make any sense, Bob says. I just don't understand them. I never will. You're not alone, I say, and I turn my gaze back to the racing gray clouds. 
Next section, a hit. Stella's foot hurts too much for her to do any hard tricks for the two o'clock show. Instead, Mac pulls her limping into the ring where she tracks a circle in the sawdust. Ruby clings to her like a shadow. Ruby's eyes go wide when Snickers jumps on Stella's back, then leaps onto her head. At the four o'clock show, Stella can only get as far as the entrance to the ring. Ruby refuses to leave her side. At the seven o'clock show, Stella stays in her domain. When Mac comes for Ruby, Stella whispers something in her ear. Ruby looks at her pleadingly, but after a moment, she follows Mac to the ring. Ruby stands alone. The bright lights made her blink. She flaps her ears. She makes her tiny trumpet sound. The humans stop eating their popcorn. They coo, they clap. Ruby is a hit. I don't know whether to be happy or sad. There she is. Oh, sorry. There she is. She's stuck there in the middle. George strokes Julia's hair. She'll be all right. She's a tough old girl. Stella sits by Stella's domain. Julia sits by Stella's domain until it's time to go home. She doesn't do her homework. She doesn't even draw. Next section, the promise. My domain gleams with moonlight when I awake to the sound of Stella's calls. Ivan, Stella says in a hoarse whisper. Ivan, I'm here, Stella. I sit up abruptly and Bob topples off my stomach. I run to the window. I can see Ruby next to Stella sleeping soundly. Ivan, I want to prom I want you to promise me something, Stella says. Anything, I say. I've never asked for a promise before because promises are forever. And forever is an unusually long time, especially when you're in a cage. Domain, I correct. Domain, she agrees. I straighten to my full height. I promise Stella, I say in a voice like my father's. But you haven't even heard what I'm asking yet, she says, and she closes her eyes for a moment. Her great chest shudders. I promise anyway. Stella doesn't say anything for a long time. Never mind, she finally says. I don't know what I was thinking. The pain is making me addled. Ruby stirs. Her trunk moves as if she was reaching for something that wasn't there. When I say the words, they surprise me. You want me to take care of Ruby? Stella, <clears throat> Stella nods. A small, <clears throat> a small gesture that makes her wince. If she could have a life that's different than mine, she needs a safe place, Ivan. Not, not here, I say. It would be easier to promise to stop eating, to stop breathing, to stop being a gorilla. I promise, Stella, I say. I promise it on my word as a silverback. Next section. It's short. It's called Knowing. Before Mac, before Bob, even before Ruby, I know that Stella is gone. I know it the way you know that summer is over and that winter is on its way. I just know. Stella once teased me that elephants are superior because they feel more joy and more grief than apes. Your gorilla hearts are made of ice. Ivan, she said her eyes glittering, ours are made of fire. Right now, I would give you all the yogurt raisins in all of the world for a heart made of ice. Next section, it's even shorter than that one. Five men. Bob heard from a rat, a reliable sort, that they tossed Stella's body into a garbage truck. It took five men and a forklift. All right, that's the end of 
our reading for today. I will catch you tomorrow. Bye.